a cop just came and said that it was a really tiny car and didn't know people that small and then drove away. Right hand drive life. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I'm driving a 1992 Honda Beat. Behind me is a 656cc inline three-cylinder and down below is a five-speed manual gearbox. Now you'll notice that I'm sitting on the right side of the car. Well, this car was only sold in Japan, so it's the only way they came. So like I said, it's a 656cc engine, which is ridiculously small. It's a 0.6 liter. And the reason it's so small is because this car is classified as a key car. And what that means is that since it has such a low engine displacement, and the dimensions are so small, you actually pay very little taxes in Japan. I'll get into that more in a little bit. So I've never really reviewed a three-cylinder and I've never reviewed something mid-engine. Like I said, the engine is right behind me and it's really small. It's about yay big. And it put out about 60 horsepower, maybe, from the factory. Again, this is a 1992. Uh, so it was actually imported here legally by my friend Chris after the 25-year rule. Now the first thing you'll notice when you're driving the Beat is just how peppy it is. It's really peppy, but it's not fast. Don't get that mixed up with peppy and fast. They're very different in this situation. So again, this car is very slow. You'll pretty much lose any race you get into. My friend Chris will really only take it up to 80 miles an hour, but that's totally missing the point of these cars. It's the point of the key car is not to be fast. But again, I'll get into that after I talk about the rest of the car. Really, for being a mid-engine car, you do not feel that it's mid-engine. I don't feel like there's a huge mass behind me, but then again, there really isn't. There's only three cylinders. You really have to think about this car as really just a motorcycle with four wheels that could seat two people. Because with that engine, that's really what it is. So let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I get three huge white gauges, which seem to be just tacked on to the end of the steering wheel. But that's fine. I'm okay with that. Again, the idea of this car is light and cheap. In the center, you get the smallest radio I believe I have ever seen in my entire life. It's about this big. That's it. Above that, you do get air conditioning. And down below the radio, you get your, obviously, shift knob, which is really nice, it's a five speed, but also below that you get power windows, which is huge. I would not expect a car to, like this to have power windows, but it does. Getting good at the turn signals, I'm hitting the right ones. But the interior of this car is so ridiculously small. I mean, so small. Everything about this car is small, but if you wanna sit in the passenger seat, good luck. I mean, honestly, good luck. Especially me, I'm a pretty big guy, and this is pretty crammed. These seats, yes, these seats are stock, these zebra print seats. These are the original seats that came in the Honda Beat, which is absolutely cool. It totally dates it to the 90s, but I, th I still personally think they look really cool. One interesting thing is how to open up the gas cap. Normally the gas cap, when they're locked, they'll have a little button below the dash or on the floor sometimes. This one is actually inside the door sill, which is a really interesting location to have it. All right, hold on, before we go any further, before I filmed this review, Chris was low on gas, so I offered to fill up his Honda Beat for him at the gas station, and it took premium gas, and this is how much it cost. That is how much it cost to fill the Honda Beat up with gas to a full tank. But you do get an actual trunk, if you can call it that, I mean there's a space designated as the trunk, and the frunk, or the front trunk, really is not useful because that's where the spare tire is and other stuff like that. The looks of this car, I go back and forth on. First of all, obviously, like I've said a thousand times, this thing is tiny, but it has little traces of Civic in it, honestly. If you look at the headlights, it kind of looks a little Civic-y, which obviously because it's a Honda, but then again, this car almost shares no parts with other Hondas, which is very un-Honda of them to do. Gotta love that turning radius. It does have a soft top and the soft top goes up, it's manual. Um, it's not a bad soft top, it's just you don't, you don't put the top, you don't keep the top on one of these, you just don't. 
This is this isn't made for top up driving. Okay, so let's actually talk about what a key car is. Well, it's pretty smart idea if you think about it. Basically, you get a tax reduction or you don't have to pay as much taxes in Japan when your car is smaller. That's why rotaries did so good is because they were 1.3 liters. This is a 0.6 liter and is called a key car, or small car. It's within the dimension requirements and engine displacement requirements to not pay almost any taxes. Plus, you don't have to pay for a parking spot in Japan, which goes for a lot of money. So it makes these cars really popular, which makes me think, why don't we institute something like that in America? I mean, really, this is the ultimate expression of when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. When you have a space problem and a gas problem, make it smaller. And this car is a fun key car. This is taking the idea of, all right, let's make a small economical car that'll fit on our streets but this is making it fun. It's a two-door roadster. This out Miata is a Miata. This takes the idea of the Miata, the affordable, reliable, two-door convertible, and just overdoes it. But the interesting thing about driving one of these cars is the fact that it still has that weirdness of right-hand drive, but it's not a skyline. Everyone thinks when you think right-hand drive in America, you think, oh, you gotta get a skyline. But you don't. Quite frankly, this is more JDM than any skyline out there. People aren't like fangirling over this. People don't think, oh, it's Godzilla. Like, there's no stigma behind this. This is just, this was just a car that was made in Japan that they never sold here which is ridiculously cool. So would I buy a 1992 Honda Beat? Yeah, I definitely would. This car is a fun little car. And there's so much you can do with a small car. Bigger is not always better, guys. It really isn't. So now if you guys are wanting a Honda Beat or really any other JDM car, I'll let Chris explain what it was like to import a car like this. So basically, it's uh, you find a car you want online and then you you have to go to the bank and send them the money and they ask you a thousand times if you actually want to send the money because they don't know you know they have no idea why yeah. you know all right so they have no idea what you're doing they don't know they're like oh do you trust these people do you know who you're buying it from and you're just like no it's people in japan you just gotta trust them so you send your money over there then they confirm the payment you talk to japan on the phone since they're 14 hours ahead of us you have to talk to them at like midnight so I'm on the phone with these people, it's like, I don't know, like two in the afternoon over there. And uh, they're telling me like, yeah, we got the car, it runs good, whatever. And uh, so they ship the car out from there. They send it um, to the port and it goes out of there and it goes to the port in Texas. That takes about a month, about three weeks actually on the ship and like a week getting on and off the ship. So, so from there it sits in customs. And if you're like me and you did the paperwork yourself, you, you screw it up and it takes an extra week and a half. And um, cost you an extra $250 on sitting at the port. So from there you have to organize a guy to meet up with the car at the port with the proper documents from the shipping company that are translated to English and you have to pay the boat, the car to get off the boat to clear the port. And then, so that guy has all these papers and he has to show up, pick the car up, put it on a truck and then drive it up here. So it sounds a lot easier than it actually is. It's very difficult and took a long <laughs> ass time. And if I didn't have the Jesse FC guy or whatever, the card would still be yeah. sitting in the port in Texas. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned something about the 1992 Honda Beat. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys. I, I, I,